This story illustrates the translation of neuroscience into an evidence-based therapy. Our research into brain plasticity and learning has created the seven training principles of sense therapy, each designed to drive the brain's capacity to form new connections. This is also the story of Karen, a young mother who lost sensation in her left arm and body after a stroke. She rediscovered the sense of touch by following the seven principles of sense. The sense approach is designed to stimulate neurogenesis, enhance existing neural connections, and forge new connections in the brain to help the person with stroke regain touch. Sense therapy begins with selecting specially designed training tasks. Sense tasks are meaningful, graded, and varied to enhance transfer. These tasks may seem simple to perform. However, the neural matrix of touch is complex. Highly specialised sensory receptors and nerves inform our sense of touch. The challenge for the person with stroke is to make sense of all the signals arising from this complex matrix. The person with stroke is guided to focus attention on the sensory goal of the task without vision and to give a response. Attention is critical for learning and heightens the brain's response to the sensation that is focused on. It has a top-down influence on sensory thresholds. Next, feedback is provided on critical features of sensation. Feedback is immediate and precise. Feedback is also given on the best hand movements to explore a particular sensation. Feedback via vision and touch is important for skill learning. Calibration requires the person to calibrate or match their impaired sensation internally by reference to a more normal sensation experienced through the other hand and through vision. The person is also prompted to imagine what the sensation is supposed to feel like immediately after feeling it with their unaffected hand. Calibration improves signal input and helps to realign brain maps. Similar brain regions are active during real-time sensing and imagined sensing. Next, anticipation trials are used. In these trials, the person knows what to expect to feel after having just experienced a similar sensation and being told that only a limited set of stimuli will be used. These prior experiences can help tune into distinctive differences in sensations. Sensory brain regions are also active during the anticipation of a stimulus. Tasks are repeated to consolidate learning. Training then progresses to more difficult discriminations within each training set and to a range of new tasks. Repetition is vital to establish and strengthen connections. Neural plastic changes are enhanced when the system is progressively challenged. 
a matrix of varied stimuli and training conditions are used to enhance the transfer of skills. Feedback is given during the act of transferring skills to new situations. It is the distinctive features of difference that form the basis for skills transfer. The person with stroke learns to drive their own recovery, actively exploring new avenues to test and expand their skills. Brain networks are important in recovery. Even though fibre tracts may be disrupted, brain activity can remap to damaged sensory regions and form new connections to other regions and networks in the brain as scientific evidence has shown for Karen. Select. Attentive exploration. Feedback. Calibrate. Anticipate. Repeat and progress. Transfer. This story is about the brain's potential to regrow cells, form new connections, strengthen existing networks, to relearn and to recover. It is a story about neuroplasticity and evidence-based practice. It is a story about a woman who is committed to recover the very best she can and who has used sense therapy to achieve this. This is a story for us all.